Welcome to The Short Score, your weekly update of rope and news from around the industry, where you can find the latest on the sport from the pro rodeo ranks to the jackpot world. I'm Taylor Vollen, and I'm your host. Hey everyone, it's Taylor Vollen. Welcome back to The Short Score. As you all know, we're in the final two weeks of the 2024 pro rodeo season, which means there are a lot of fun rodeos happening at this point in the year. We just watched the famous Pendleton Roundup over the weekend. This upcoming weekend will be Mandan, the new North Dakota Rough Rider Cup, the largest one header of the year. And next week, we'll watch the Governor's Cup in Sioux Falls. In case you forgot, Sioux Falls last year was super important to the top 15 and the bubble race. So, like I said, there's a ton of money to be won still in the last two weeks and a lot of good watching. But back to Pendleton. Over the weekend, we all watched Destin Egeskiza and Levi Lord add yet another big win to their resumes with the Pendleton Roundup title. In case you forgot, Destin and Levi are having a big year. They won Odessa, Denver, and Austin at the beginning of the year, followed by Guyman in the spring and Greeley over the 4th of July, plus so many others in between and after. This win in Pendleton also solidified them going into Sioux Falls, number one in the tour standings which is actually something we talked about and you're going to hear about on this episode of The Short Score, which is brought to you by Purina. I caught up with the guys after their win and we talk a little bit about what the Pendleton Roundup win means to them, their year, and so much more. Tell me a little bit about the win. I'm sure that's got to be a bucket list win. Yeah, that's one that I've talked about for a long time. Like, you talk about winning a rodeo, you'd like to win a rodeo when you get to it or whatever, you know. But Pendleton is one that kind of stays on mind year year round. Yeah, that's one of the one of the coolest wins that I that I've ever had, and I don't even know. Uh, I don't even, I didn't think that there was a part of me that didn't know if I'd ever get it done, but I like that radio so much. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nerve wracking, but uh, it seems really hard to win and to actually get it done was, was pretty awesome. Yeah. Can I ask what makes you say that you kind of never thought, didn't know if you'd ever get it won? It's just so hard. And yeah. The setup is setup is just hard enough that it's kind of a drawing competition also you can't no matter how good you rope if you draw like they can just draw you right out of yeah. it you know we didn't never we didn't ever draw a great steer but we didn't ever draw just a bad steer we had three just medium cows that gave us a chance to catch them in six flat and it just worked out perfect but yeah i've had steers there that you you just can't be six on, you know, and you can't really take a seven there and still have a chance to win it, it mm -hmm. seems like. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, and I kind of forgot how, I mean, you guys were so consistent this year. What, five nine, five nine, six one? Is that right? Yep. I, I mean, won 200 bucks in the first, <laughs> first two rounds. We split eighth and ninth. But kind of what you were saying, like, I don't feel like that's easy to make that consistent of runs there, or at least it doesn't look like it. Yeah, that wasn't really our game plan. It just kind of happened like that. The first one, the rounds pay so much there. And yeah. And we seen what we had in the first round. He was uh, considerably better speed-wise at Ellensburg. Mm -hmm. But he fell down over there, and we thought that we would have a chance to get a good round money on that steer. And then he took off a little bit more than we thought, and he slipped in the corner. Levi and I did a great job of catching that one. Yeah. And still, 5-9 is usually worth pretty good money over there. We were winning, uh, I, know, I think, sixth after they were halfway done. We were already winning sixth. Like, well, that kind of sucks. You know, mm -hmm. you want you want to win something in the rounds there because it pays so much. It's kind of hard to catch three. But And then the second one, wasn't really too thrilled to draw him. He just yeah. kind of a medium, medium plus cow. And, we were really happy with a five nine on that steer. I didn't really see it going that good. I thought any kind of mid six would be would be really good on that steer and told Levi I would just do the best we could do, I guess, and hope it was fast enough. Mm -hmm. Didn't really feel like a five nine, but the clock said five nine. <laughs> we, were, it matters. We, were, we were pretty happy 
pretty happy with our second round time. And yeah. The shorter, the shorter round, there's so many. Like, it seemed like half the steers were just slow lopers, and the other half were a lot of medium ones. So mm. we were really banking on just having a slow loper in the short round, and then we didn't have, again, we didn't just have the one we wanted. And thought just whatever it took to take the lead, you know. Yeah. But it wasn't going to be easy. Mm-hmm. And got a decent start, and steer let us kind of catch up to him, and it worked out worked out just right. That's kind of just one of those deals where it's probably your day because to give Coleman and Jr. any other steer in the short round, there's a pretty good chance they could be at least 6'4 on him, and they had that blue realm that just run off. So. Yeah. Yeah. Might have just been our day. I've been third call back there before also and had the worst one in the short round because it takes you out of it. Mm-hmm. Levi was bragging earlier when I talked to him about the horse you're riding. Is that Mohawk? Do I have that right? Yeah, Mohawk. Tell me a little bit. Is he your longer score horse? Is that kind of where you primarily ride him? Yeah, I drive put on him mainly. He hasn't gotcha. seen very many rodeos this year. I don't. I didn't think I so. I rode him at Cheyenne, a mm-hmm. couple of steers, and I rode him there. I rode him at Deadwood. I think that maybe his only third rodeo this year. Really? I just. I jackpot on him a lot, and he's really easy to rope on. He scores, and he can really run. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have the flashy uh, butt drag and face really good and all that. Mm-hmm. He's just kind of free running, but he's really good at Pendleton. He will. I have. I don't even know if I would enter if I didn't have him, just because the the scare factor of it. You know, For I sure. even have confidence in your horse there. And on him, I'm not worried in the least bit. You know, he's very sure footed, no matter how fast he's running. And, that the uh, slipping never crossed my mind when I was mm-hmm. riding him. So as long as I own him, I'll I'll always be in penalty. Yeah, sure. gotcha. Um, Chelsea and I were talking about how you know at the beginning of the year we remember you guys had said that you were really wanting to kind of you know think about the average more because of the tour standings type of deal. I feel like I mean you guys are going to go into Sioux Falls number one in the tour standings, so I feel like you kind of achieved that goal. How does that kind of feel? Yeah, the the average has definitely kicked our butt a little bit last year, so mm-hmm. it's been more on our mind. But I can't say that we just completely changed the way we rope. Yeah, still, still pretty aggressive, but it just seems like more things have went in our favor this year. Like things just fell into place and gotten better situations. It's just been a real last year as far as winning and catching a lot of steers in a row and not getting in too bad of slops. We only had one kind of kind of slump and it was for two weeks, you know, it wasn't yeah. terrible. This episode is brought to you by Purina. Confidently address your horse's unique weight needs and help optimize their overall well being with research proven Purina animal nutrition feeds, designed by passionate equine nutritionists. Partner with Purina to nourish your horse to their optimal body condition. Explore weight management resources for your horse today at purinamills.com slash feed dash finder. I'm sure you've got to be on cloud nine. I mean, this is, I bet, a bucket list win. Oh, well, yeah, it's pretty amazing just to uh, come out on top of a rodeo like that with all the history and the setup. Mm-hmm. It's a good team. There's 150 some teams, and you just got to have everything go your way and be just worked out good for us this year, I guess. Like I said, there's, there's not a lot of people here that ready that haven't won it. Mm-hmm. And to, to be able to get it done, we definitely, it's one that we look forward to. Yeah. Dave, Dave about getting the win, but to actually get it done was pretty awesome. Right. I mean, from the outside looking in, this has just kind of been an awesome year all around for you guys, too. How are you kind of feeling now that it's almost done? We're almost at the finish line. Yeah, we're, we're uh, trying to keep our head down and finish it pretty strong but yes it definitely has been from start to finish it's been pretty dang good we started out obviously doing doing really well in the winter time with Odessa Denver mm-hmm. and Austin and I think we left the house with maybe 60 or 70 thousand one and it just it just never really slowed down too much for us we've been able to keep our horses together and, and we seem to both be open pretty well all the time if one of us has struggled a little bit the other one seems to pick up the slack if 
Miles having a little heck, he's making sure he turns all the steers. And then same with if he's having a little heck and only turns me two or three, I've, I've been out to catch them. So it's just been, we've, we've never really had too many down weeks, you know. We've mm-hmm. had a couple, we've had a couple where it's been a little slow, but for the most part, it's been able to, to just steadily keep going up. And I guess that's good out here when you can, you can kind of just keep stringing together some money each week. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about changing subjects, I guess, but uh, your runs in Pendleton, kind of the fun part. Yeah, our uh, second, you know, it's a different setup and a, a totally different radio. You know, everything kind of goes out the window, but we, we <laughs> still treat it like any other three-hitter. We'd like to win win something in the first round. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely kind of going at the first one um, in the round of pace we'll get there. So yeah. we had a decent series. You don't really know what they're going to do there the first time coming down the lane. Um, they could haul butt somewhere else and then be really good there. Mm-hmm. So our steer was actually pretty good in Ellensburg, and then he was he was just middle of the road over there. There was a lot of better ones, but there were nature some worse ones, and made just a pretty aggressive good run. We were five nine on the first one, one one eighth in the first round, which usually I think that was a little bit better. Mm-hmm. But I think the steers were just a little bit better this year. Gotcha. Uh, so then coming back on the second one. Still would like to win round money because it pays so good there, but mm-hmm. also at that point, then you start thinking about the average to where if you just pick a good run, you know, you're going to have a good call in the short round. So it kind of was going to depend on our draw, and then we drew a pretty strong one on the second one. So we had to kind of go at him just to even. If we were going to stay there all week and open the short round, we wanted to have a chance to win it. We didn't want to come back to 10th call back, you know, so. Yeah. We, tried, we, we were trying to be pretty aggressive on him, and then it didn't win the 5 9 on the second round. So, same exact play was the first one, and won eighth and both the first two rounds. So, that was kind of, kind of weird at the same time. And yeah. The exact same thing. Um, but, but together, the two runs, is second call back, and then obviously, there you're going to have a chance to win it. And come back to the short round, didn't really draw one that we had picked out, but looking down through the list, the top four. We're all kind of had strong, strong steers, so nobody really had an advantage. And then, and then obviously everybody seen Coleman. Yeah, probably the worst steer. So we knew if we could take the lead um, with a pretty decently aggressive run, that they were going to have to. Not that they couldn't do it, obviously, but that steer they had drawn was not not very good. So once we took the lead, or six one, we thought we had a pretty good chance. And then, and then they just got that steer caught. It was so fast. Yeah. Luckily, it worked out for us, I guess. Mm-hmm. What was kind of going through your head after that run? And, like, you know, your victory lap, I know that's such a crazy deal there, too. I mean, can yeah. You, yeah. Can you even explain how you're feeling in that moment? Well, not really. Those are just kind of <laughs> moments you think you'll know what they feel like, but mm-hmm. you don't really do it until it happens. I just, like I said, I just rode, rode to the side and watched the film and rope, and then I seen, seen the steer kind of beat him out of there, and at that point, I kind of knew we got it done, so then you just start running around, you go get, get on the horse, run across the field, and then all the pictures, and victory lap is it's one of a kind over there. It feels like you're out there for 10 minutes. Yeah. I think I, I even stopped too early. I thought I was done, and then I was like, yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah. So, I still lost this hat. We were, we, the road run was a lot better than the victory lap. <laughs> hey, you know, that's what matters, so that's okay, I think. Yeah. Now, you're riding Polly there, right? You know, I was riding Polly. I don't. I haven't used him very much this year. Yeah. I just read ready mainly, but he's there ain't been nothing wrong with him. He's just we I've kind of had both my horses and all the radios. We haven't done like a fly or anything like that. So if Brady's staying there, I've just kind of read him. But um, for a setup like that, and, and just kind of trying to save Brady, you know, yeah. uh, I've read Polly there three or four times. And, yeah, he's been really good there. He, he jumps the barrier every time. And he still did. There's no barrier, but there's a, that big squirrel line they put out there. He, he jumped at that all three times. But other than that, once I got him out of the box, it was pretty good. And then Jason Stewart got him also. So oh. he, was, he was good over there. And, and then Bustin's, Bustin's horse, I think, is maybe the best head horse I've seen over there. Now. Yeah. He does so cool. He just, he just tough naturally. He doesn't have a huge drag his butt move so he kind of stays on top of the ground and that horse just really makes a difference over there how to get that horse like that Mm -hmm. gotcha so okay kind of thinking like next couple of weeks go to Mandan and then Sioux Falls I'm assuming 
Yeah, yeah. And then Sioux Falls and then Stephenville or just just like I said, trying to keep our head down. Yeah. We obviously have a goal to win the regular season would be awesome and and that couple teams, especially uh, Caleb and Judy, those guys are every time they look up they're they're winning something also. So they mm-hmm. They're pretty tough to stay ahead of. And we're just trying to do our best to win what we can win. And whenever they draw us a good one or, or have a chance to try to capitalize, you know. But yeah. we're just trying to keep our head down for these last two or three series and then get home. And hopefully, we'll, we're, we're going to obviously have a decent chance no matter what yeah. place we go in Vegas. But we'd like to go in first, get home, start getting ready for that, I guess. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Short Score. We're going to have lots of updates for you as the end of the year comes. Thank you also to Purina. Make sure you explore weight management resources for your horses today at purinamills.com slash feed finder.